Starting painting after losing my eyesight, it, it was extremely difficult. It was, it was impossible, and the reason it was impossible is because I, I didn't think it could be done. And it wasn't until a year later, after learning the O&M, the orientation mobility, how to get around with a cane, that the, that the idea even crossed my mind, that I could try to do something. And once I decided that, then it was possible. And, and, and then it became this sort of joyous thing. I was still angry, I was still depressed, but every little step that I made in, in the right direction, it was just a better day. So every day was better than the next because I was able to create a little bit more. And I think about disability in a little bit of a different way, I think, where I think we all have a disability because it just means that you can't do something. And if we're lucky enough to live long enough, then we're probably gonna lose something. We're gonna lose one of our senses, like be able to see or to be able to, to move around as well. But what's, what I think is most important is not the disability, but your ability. Who cares what you can't do? And that's a wonderful thing about art. There, it doesn't matter what you can't do in art. It's all about what you can do. It's about creating, it's about creation. Losing the last bit of my vision when I was 30, you know, I, I've been losing it slowly, but then suddenly that last bit went quickly and it was a wake up call for me. And it made me first very angry, very depressed as, as anyone is when, they, when their life gets shaken up. But for me though, it, it, was, it was a way to restart because I, I was taken all the way back to zero. I had to relearn how to do everything, how to eat, and how to cook. And um, you know, I don't think I would have ever painted. I don't think I would have had the courage to paint because I wouldn't have had the courage to try something and fail at it and to be okay with that. And I don't think anybody needs to go blind for that to happen, but but you know, anything in your life that you can grab a hold of and you think, I, I want to make a change, I, I want to be different than the person I was before. For me, it took something like, I guess I'm slow or something, I don't know, but it took a massive thing to happen for me to, to, to reevaluate and think, you know, I don't want to live the same way anymore and I'm not going to, you know, and every day is the same thing. I, my values have completely changed. You know, you know, if you're, if you're not, if you're not con constantly exploring, I think, um, you, you can't really make art. Uh, you know, art, art, art comes from conflict. It comes from, from putting yourself out there and experiencing and, and taking in the, the, the people around you, the environment that you're in. And the more that you, that you can get out there, the more of yourself you put into your life, and the more of that you can put into your art. And all of us have strengths. So we find those strengths, we find our weaknesses. Sometimes if we look at our weaknesses enough, I think we can turn those into a strength. The wonderful thing about art, whether it's music or pottery or painting, is that you are making something new. And if you're making something new, if you're creating, if you're being creative, then it's almost impossible for you to get in a sort of depression where you think that you have no effect on the world, that you know, a, a way that, that what, what you do doesn't have an impact. Because every time you sit down and you create, you know you're adjusting things, you know you're making an impact, you're changing the way things are. And once you're doing that there, that just lends right over into your everyday life, to your interactions with people and, and what you do just makes everything better.